And if the sequester cuts stay on the books and Republicans can point to them and say, hey, there's just not a lot of pain that's associated with this, this is more bluster than anything else, I think that bolsters their argument going forward that, you know what, more spending cuts are even better. We were able to survive this round of spending cuts and it didn't seem like the world ended. Well, we still have a spending problem, we still have a debt problem, let's cut even more, uh, particularly from programs we don't like. And it's not going to affect I, the well, we also had a big tax increase, and the market took that in stride as well. Mm -hmm. So both but, teams well, can make that case. Why don't we accept that as the new normal, though, that we stumbled along? Like, we could be doing a lot better. And I think if you look at, you know, what the House tried to do, they did pass two plans of their own to avoid the sequester, and the Senate hasn't done anything. And if you notice, the there's... The Senate's going to pass their own plan. It's got big, no chance in the no, House. No, but Come Richard, on. there it's is like a split. Paper That's around. not the problem. There is a split between the White House and the Senate right now now they're not even operating on the same page so if you can't get your own party together to present a unified plan then there there is no hope for an honest negotiation Jessica, you're one of my favorites but if you for a second present the republicans the united front right now okay john boehner uh you know he's gonna have a heart attack the idea that he can corral his constituents he was the same guy remember they had a trillion three in revenue Remember, remember Andrew not long ago? The first time he had a deal with the president, he went back to his caucus and said, I got it. It's a trillion three in terms of revenue spread over 10 years. It was the 800 that he already got, but then he also had the loopholes. And they all but threw him out of leadership. And he went back to the president and said, never mind, the Tea Party's not going to go along to get along. So the Republicans can't even agree at the end of the day what the deal is. I just, not a pox on both their houses, because I don't even think that's fair, but I just don't see, Andrew, how this deal gets done. Where, Where is the deal, and who capitulates first? You know, I, I, you could make arguments. There are better arguments that nobody is going to capitulate, because there are lots of pressures on both sides here. But we've got a bigger problem. The calendar. March well, 27th, right? I know they're giving hints that they're going to kick it down to September, but March 27th, tell everybody why there's a circle around that day. Well, that's when the continuing resolution, the temporary budget deal, expires on March 27th. Without a deal that either extends that or, or puts together a formal budget going after that date, the government, or at least large portions of it, will shut down. So, you know, you think if the, if the sequester is some water dripping out of the bathtub, a, a government shutdown would be pulling the stopper and watching everything go down the drain. It would be far more immediate, far more serious than okay, the sequester. Okay, then lead me to the long game. How does this go? You know, I, I don't have... I don't have the, the I don't have the path to salvation here. I only have the doom and gloom report, Rich. Because do better at the casinos if you did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> none of the none of the different forces at play are that good if you're rooting against the sequester. First up, there's an argument that the president doesn't want a deal. Several sources reporting President Obama is pinning his hopes already on the 2014 midterms. That if he can throw enough dirt and make it stick to congressional Republicans, then he campaigns hard for Democrats. Dems win back the House, keep the Senate, and give the president the room he needs to get his agenda through. That may be a bit of a long shot. Number two, it's John Boehner's fault as he works to try and keep his job. Even more sources over the weekend reporting on a deal between Boehner and conservative Tea Party House Republicans to keep Boehner in the big chair as long as he doesn't give on taxes and revenue. Boehner agreed to that deal at the Republican retreat reportedly in January, but that breakaway group still not trusting Boehner. Still the votes to boot him as speaker if he gives an inch to the White House. And that, that got to number three because uh, Republicans not taking yes for an answer. Uh, there, there was a lot of talk of that over the weekend, and as you mentioned, there was some back and forth from John Boehner uh, on Meet the Press this weekend about he put more on the table in terms of revenue and tax increases back in December in the last negotiation and won't put it back on the table now. I, I, well, we could play the bite. I just want to cut even it. Even if Obama moves on some entitlement reform. Dominic, here's, here's the thing that I think complicates this. Every single poll says they blame the Republicans. Mm -hmm. Every single poll you look at, um, and they blame by big margins. The only one coming out okay out of this is the president. Democrats do even better than Republicans. So what's the incentive for the president to move on this? He doesn't want his second term here to be railroaded in the beginning, and he can't move on anything. But at the same end, he says, the public's with me. Every time I do this, these guys break it in the 11th hour because they know they don't have the public support on this. But he doesn't want to waste time because he knows, historically, he's only got about a year and a half for second-term presidents between the lame duck kicks in. Right. You just answered the question right there. Legacy. This president, just like any other president, Democrat or Republican, they don't want to be seen as the top person in office that couldn't get anything done. 
So the president, everything he does from this point on until the day he leaves office is all about his legacy. And as it stands right now from term number one, you know, couldn't play well with the Republicans, vice versa. They couldn't play well together. He doesn't, he wants to try and change that. Now that scenario that you painted where, you know, where Democrats may gain control of the House, it's a long shot as you indicated. I mean, I, I don't know if that's really at play. I think if the president could work out a deal right now that he would for the good of the country. But my only point is in, in Jessica, Boehner's not gonna have a deal he can say yes to if he wanna keep his job, like Andrew reported, if he gives a penny more in revenue. Even the loopholes they all talked about closing, he's not even gonna put those on the table. I, that's where I'm just on a rub on this. Usually I can see where the deal's gonna be. But, I don't know how but, long it'll but take. What but what is the other side giving? And that's the real question. He already put question. a federal reform on the table. He already said he did. To what degree Medicare. would they do means testing for They'd social security? Test, they even change the age I on it? I think there actually are a number of Republicans in the House that would be willing to a whole overhaul of the tax code that what was discussed during the campaigns but it has to be done the problem right now is that there's no faith in these negotiations there's no trust between congress and the white house so i think until you can get back to that place they're not going to be able to effectively but, negotiate but how do you ever get back to that place but, well uh, bana's word uh, doesn't mean much it rises more than anything i can remember that is job security there is for andrew just said it they go to the Williamsburg retreat. I happen to be at the same place they went to like a few months ago, uh, it's nice. a few months before that, actually when Ryan was uh, picked as the running man. So, but anyway, they are there and they say to him, listen, if you want to keep your job, here's the deal. You get one more penny in revenue here, uh, you can go sit on the back benches with the freshmen. Um, you don't, you hold the line, you got your job. Why would he ever move on that when he's got enough folks um, that can put them out. That, that's the problem. And the president's not going to do any deal here that doesn't have some revenue on the table because the public tells them that's what they want. I just don't see how the two, uh, two sides meet. I do, and I think the president does. He's reaching out to some of the um, defense hawks, guys like uh, McCain, guys like Lindsey Graham, and he said, look, we are really taking a hit on defense. But they can't and I know the House, you believe as much as I do. Graham. Come on. There will be some sort of a deal done at the Senate level, which will put pressure on these guys. It'll plug some of the so-called loopholes, some of those deductions, and relieve some of the pressure on defense. I think that's part of the grand bargain. Uh -huh. If you don't get that done, they don't pass a budget. They pass the buck and kick it down the road. Those are your choices. All right. See? Give Ned 30 seconds. You summed it all up here. And by the way, they're not pretty pictures either. Scenario, but he did sum it up. All right. We take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to do a little bit of a post-mortem. What, if anything... Will the GOP learn, um, I'm curious um, from Ms. Proud's perspective here, from Romney's loss here and moving forward? Already some really interesting signs from some members in the party who say we got to do things different while others don't know who to blame. Well, Romney and White spoke this weekend about the reasons they lost. It'll be interesting to see if you agree. Stay with us.